It's Master Chef. Two expert judges to test them at the highest level. We're looking for a great amateur cook who can make it as a professional. Someone who can turn out exceptional food. This is one tough competition. Whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. It's 8 a.m. on quarter-final day. And these four heat winners have returned to fight for a coveted place in the semi-finals. If you make it through this round, you are on your way to changing your life. Today is about the person who holds their nerve, the person who makes the least mistakes, has courage in their conviction and demonstrates real skill, as well as the potential to grow. It would mean so much going all the way and winning Master Chef. I'm not sure everybody else wants it as much as I do. I have the ability and the knowledge to go ahead and win Master Chef. I want this opportunity to change my life. To prove they're the best, today they'll have to produce an exceptional three course meal of their own design. Wow. Wow. But before that, they must show the judges that they have food knowledge. Do you know what that is? They must also prove a passion for food with a genuine commitment to changing their lives. This isn't a pipe dream. This is something I have been working on for an awful long time. So who out of these four exceptional cooks has what it takes to stay in the race? Only one of them can win. First up, it's electrician Paul. Big man. Big food, big flavours. He won over the judges in his heat with a flavoursome tart tatin. It's buttery, it's sugary, it's sweet, it's delicious. But his presentation let him down. I reckon we have got two kilos of dessert. You've got to get your puds daintier. He now needs to show he can inject some finesse into his food. I would like to see him not trying so hard, a little bit more refinement. Okay. Thanks very much. I've really upped the ante now. It really is what I want to do. And hopefully get through today, get a place in the semi-finals and really show what I can do. At just 18, Emily wowed John and Greg with a raw talent for inventive cooking. Where on earth is this coming from? I don't have a criticism. I think it's hot. For me, I find her so exciting. But as the baby of the bunch, Emily will have to prove she has the skills to match her imagination. Where's her food going to go today? Is it going to wow? Is it going to terrify? I think that I've got as good a chance as anybody and I'm going to try my hardest and that's all I can do at the end of the day. 35-year-old publisher Christopher is determined to open his own restaurant. I like this guy, Christopher. He's strong and he's very, very confident. He impressed the judges with sophisticated flavour combinations. It's good. And it's very good. That's, that, that's lovely. That works on many different layers. Quite exciting. The question for me with Christopher is, can he produce more dishes like that duck? If he can, he can go all the way. I'm confident. I can do it. I know I can do it. I'm happy with what I'm going to cook and I think the judges will be too. Finally, it's IT consultant Alex. Alex, I think, has real, real promise. She now needs to show she has what it takes to be a semi-finalist. Just been the biggest emotional roller coaster that I think I've ever been on, and it's just been the most incredible experience, and I don't want this experience to stop. I love quarterfinal days. I love the tension, I love the pressure, I love the food. We're going to have a semi finals today. We've got four great cooks, but our judging is going to be tough.
By 10 o'clock, the contestants make their way back to MasterChef HQ. They're about to be tested on their food knowledge and on their commitment. After this, one of them will be sent home before the final cook-off. Right, ingredient recognition. We know this is important because a great cook understands great ingredients. I've got condiments. Condiments are used to enhance the flavours of base foodstuffs. They bring sweetness, saltiness, sharpness or heat. And every single food culture has its own favourite condiment. I have fish and seafood. I would expect if the guys really do buy good quality produce, they should get at least four of my fish. Now, I think most of these are instantly recognisable with a few tricky ones, and I'm fascinated to find out what happens. This is Worcester sauce. It's got the colour and the texture of dark soy. It's got to be tasted. Balsamic vinegar. Balsamic vinegar. And Worcester sauce. Alex has made a good start, but the next stage is crucial. It's the passion test. She now needs to convince the judges she's ready for a future in food. This is what I want to have the opportunity to do. If I can keep that motivation up, then why not? I could go all the way. In your own time. When I first applied for MasterChef, I thought I wanted to win this competition. These past few days, that desire has just grown stronger and stronger. I do understand that it really does take 110% dedication. I want the opportunity to face every challenge that MasterChef can throw at me and want the opportunity to rise to those challenges. Alex, thank you very much. Squid, recognisable for its very, very long body and its two wings on the outside. And it is not an octopus. An octopus has eight tentacles. This has ten. Do you know what that is? That's a squid. Squid? Do you know what that is? Uh, that looks like a squid. That is a... Cuttlefish. There are clearly holes in Christopher's food knowledge. He now needs to go the extra mile to show John and Greg he's got the drive to take him all the way. The amount of effort, time and energy I've put into this, they're going to see that. And if I wasn't passionate, you know, I wouldn't have done that. I'm 35 years old. I would have loved to have done this when I was 20, but not having the money, and um, the belief in myself, and um, the opportunity, I couldn't. And to win would be the greatest reward. This isn't a pipe dream. This is something I have been working on for an awful long time. So it means the world to me. Christopher, thank you very much indeed. Thanks. Thank you. Gernard. This one is fascinating for me. Classically, has been used in fish soup in France for many, many years. It is just starting to make its way across the rest of the world. It's very, very flavoursome. Do you know what this is? I think that might be a snapper. Shall we come back? Yes, please. Sorry, monkfish. Do you know what that is? That's a red mullet. Um, Gerard? 18-year-old Emily was the only contestant to correctly identify all the fish and seafood. But will she have the maturity to articulate her love for cooking? It's starting to feel the pressure a bit more now in the quarterfinal. The stakes are definitely higher. Hopefully they might be able to see some kind of potential in me. It should be interesting. OK. I've really thought about sort of, you know, why I cook and why I love it so much. And I've just come to the conclusion that food is like the product of my personality. I love the creative process of cooking. It's almost like producing a piece of art that isn't just visual, but that you have to involve so many different elements. You know, you have to think about taste and the aroma and the texture. And I know that I'm young and I know that I might not have the knowledge that other contestants have, but I'm so eager to learn. OK. Thanks, Emily.
the sea bass. The trendiest fish of all. Years ago, it was used for fish and chips, and it was thought of being absolute rubbish fish. It is absolutely beautiful. Might be sea bass. What is that? That is cod. Sea bass. Do you know what that is? It's a sea bass. Paul is doing well, but he now needs to persuade the judges that he's passionate about a career in food. Identification round, I feel, went really well, but the passion test now is, is the killer. I would be really upset if I don't get to cook for John and Greg today because I know if I do cook for them, I know I will get through. Um, for the last 10 years, um, I've known that I want to change my profession. Um, when I'm not working, I'm generally in the kitchen, honing my skills, knowing that it's, it's, it is what I wanted to want to do. Um, winning MasterChef seemed a million miles away when I first applied, but now it seems it, you know, it's becoming a reality. Uh, so please, just give me the opportunity to cook this afternoon. I can show you how good I really can be. Thank you, Paul. OK, thank Take you. Care. Well, that was an interesting lineup. We have got four people. We have only got three places for them. We have to lose one person now. Alex did the best in the ingredients test, John. That points to the girl doing a lot more cooking than the others, or a lot more varied cooking than the others. Alex said to us, look, I realise how tough it's going to be, and I have got that sort of strength and dedication. I believe her. Emily. The fact that she's 18 years old and taught herself to cook the way she cooks right now and has the knowledge she has already at 18, it could mean great things. She's a clever girl to be able to analyse why it is she's cooking the way she is. She's obviously really thought about it. And she identified all the fish. She has to go through, John. So, we've got Emily in. Alex? Yep. Let's talk about Christopher, because there is no denying that he actually wants to work in food. There is no denying he wants to run a restaurant. He does actually really want to do this. Let's not forget, he was beaten by an 18-year-old girl in the ingredients recognition. What do you think of Paul? Paul talks like an honest man. You know, he, he says he's not happy being an electrician anymore. I understand that. With the ingredients test and with the speech now, Paul hasn't done anything wrong, but actually hasn't done anything to set the world on fire either. It's in there. It's in there. I can feel it in him. He's got the heart for it. What do we do? Um... We have a conundrum. As you know, there's only three places for people to cook this afternoon. Paul, you're leaving us, I'm afraid. Sorry. I feel really let down that I've not got through, you know, I'm really good to. We're probably getting so fast, obviously. Really, uh, just wanted to go a bit further, you know. You are our three. That's exciting. There is a semi-final place at stake. It's really up to you now. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. The three remaining contestants now face their most advanced cooking challenge yet. They have an hour and 20 minutes to produce a three-course meal that they've designed themselves. The standards expected at this stage are at a much higher level. Publisher Christopher is hoping to stand out with some unusual flavour combinations. To start, we've got duck liver and strawberry with a balsamic reduction. Then we've got grey mullet on a bed of sweet potato clap shot. And then to end, we have a cranachan. Cranachan, fantastic Scottish pudding. But, Christopher, you have to accept, though, that if you said liver and strawberry to somebody, they would balk. Yep. Is there shock value in what you're doing? Absolutely not. Flash fry these off, throw in a few strawberries, they caramelise. 
It's delicious. It goes really well together. Christopher, very good luck. Thank you. There he is telling us that the duck livers and strawberries go together. He is taking, again, huge risks, but we know he can put flavours together. He delivers those three courses. I'll tell you what, he's in. IT consultant Alex wants to display her skills with some technically demanding dishes. These dishes, they're going to lift us, fill us, delight us. They are what, Alex? Uh, lime and chicken Thai salad. Thai beef curry, and then uh, vanilla souffle. I just hope the souffle doesn't go plah at the last minute. So we could win this or lose it on this souffle? Potentially. Alex, why does it mean so much to you? It's just an, an absolutely amazing opportunity to change my life and to do something I really enjoy and, and to do something that can give other people so much pleasure. Vanilla souffle, what a risk. It is ambitious. This is a competition. If she does it right, I'll be very, very happy for her. I'm terrified for her. 18-year-old Emily wants to wow with creative recipes she's invented herself. I'm cooking you um, ginger salmon tartare to start. That's followed by duck with a cherry sauce and parsnip mousse. And then I am cooking you a mud pie. <laughs> A mud pie? What's a mud pie? Uh, hopefully pure nostalgia. I used to make mud pies in the bottom of the garden, so I thought I'd try and recreate one as a pudding. The ingredients in this mud pie are? Chocolate with thyme, and then I'm having a tarragon sort of grass um, candied with uh, raspberries. Wow. <laughs> That's risky stuff, Emily. Well, you can have disasters, but when I visualise the dish, I take into account all the different elements of it and make something that hopefully is a bit of a different experience and tastes good. Amongst your friends, you must seem very different. <laughs> you could say that, yes. I think they've come to terms with how different I am. <laughs> mud pie. That's my problem. Tarragon grass, which has been crystallised. This is either absolute brilliance or complete madness. Semi-final places are not won by the faint-hearted. Five minutes left. With minutes to go, will Alex's souffles rise on time? Three minutes! That's it, time's up. Alex needs to prove she can perfect her savoury dishes, but will her Thai salad of marinated chicken on lettuce deliver? The strength of the lettuce detracts slightly from your minced chicken, mm. but the chicken itself is really good. It's soft, it's sweet, it's got the freshness of the mint in there and the shallots. It doesn't deliver in the heat, because you've decided to take all the spice out. I really like it. I like the crunch that the gem gives it. I like the lime in it. I would also like some chilli heat. She's now relying on her beef massaman curry with steamed rice to explode with flavour. We've got bits of cassia bark. We've got bits of star anise in here. I kind of had a minute to go on, so panicked a little bit. And let's just hope I don't choke on a branch. Again, I don't believe you put enough chilli in there. I don't believe it's hot enough. And the thing about it is the beef is still slightly chewy. It does have good flavours in there. It has that lime sweetness that tamarind brings. Very deep, lovely flavours. It is missing out on some heat again. Alex was hoping to show off her flair for desserts with a difficult-to-cook vanilla souffle and berry coulis. Hello! Hello. It's gone down quite a long way, hasn't it?
the souffle is just egg. It doesn't have the richness of the vanilla. It doesn't have all those flavours that it needs in there. And it doesn't have the richness of a pudding that I think we expect from Alex. Good, sharp, deep sauce. I oh, think it's a real shame. I, I, I think th this, is, this would have been a fantastic pud. You know, I, I, am, I am disappointed. I think I had the time to concentrate on it a little bit more. Um, but... What do you think we should do now? I know I made mistakes today. I think, you know, part of it probably was nerves, but my confidence can only go from, from strength to strength now. Emily's invented her starter of salmon tartare marinated in ginger with an apple and pink peppercorn salad. It's unusual. Ginger is the prominent flavour when you first get it. Mm -hmm. Moving to salmon and then, then sharp apple and a little bit of chilli pepper heat comes in at the end. I like the look of it more than I like the flavour of it. But I would finish it. I don't find it that unusual because I quite like the idea of the freshness of the apple. I really enjoy it. Can she now win over both the judges with her main course of pan-fried duck in a cherry sauce and parsnip mousse? Beautifully cooked duck. Really nearly great sauce. It doesn't stay around for long enough. All in all, great ideas. It, it definitely will be a fantastic dish. It nearly is. Thank you. What you do get is a beautifully cooked piece of duck. The combinations are right. Cherries, parsnips, duck, absolutely right. The textures are right. It's so good. For pudding, it's another one of Emily's own creations, a chocolate mud pie with crystallised tarragon and raspberries. I think that just looks wonderful. I mean, it is a mud pie, isn't it? <laughs> with a little turf of grass on the top, and it's, <laughs> it's great. Do you really honestly believe that candy tarragon, raspberries and chocolate go together? I've tried it and I love it. That's all I can say. Wow. Wow. That works. You, you, wow. I'm getting really smooth, well-made chocolate. And the chocolate pastry is great. And raspberry sharp, which takes it somewhere, takes it to another dimension. It's really delicious. You would eat the whole lot. I think your food for me and you as a cook, you're inspiring. I hope that you can see that I'm really putting my heart and soul into this cooking and that I'm on a journey and I just really hope that you can see maybe a glimpse of what might happen if I um, had the opportunity to learn more. Christopher is taking a risk with the flavour combinations in his starter, pan-fried duck's liver with strawberries and a balsamic reduction. In two parts, I think it's good. I think the livers and the balsamic vinegar are really nice with the onions. I don't mind the strawberries and the salad and the onions and the balsamic. The two of them clashing with each other and coming in this massive collision in my mouth, I find, in Greg's words, highly unusual. Well, when I've made it in the past, you know, it's tasted great. I'm absolutely fine with the sweetness of that strawberry going into the liver. We're not always going to agree. John and I, I'm not disappointed by it. OK. I enjoyed it. Christopher is hoping to stand out with his main course of grey mullet with a sweet potato clap shot and a lime and dill hollandaise. The fish is a nice, strong flavour. Sweet potato, it seems a little odd to have sweetness going on. I don't pick any lime at all. All the parts on your plate are cooked very, very well. It's now the, the matter of making that sauce as potent as you want it to be. And maybe that means, you know, a lot more lime right at the last minute. 
For dessert, Christopher has made a Scottish crannican. A seriously, seriously rich, rich dish. The sourness of those raspberries, I love. The texture of the cream, the crunch of that oatmeal, I absolutely love. It's very well made. It's very well thought about. You know exactly what you want to do. Good on you. Thank you very much. Honey comes in there like a fragrance first. And that beautiful cheese inside that creamy, it just takes it somewhere else completely. I think that is, flavour-wise, beautiful. Thank you very much. I thought my presentation was well done. I had everything under control from start to finish. So, overall, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy with myself. Greg and I are going to sit down, we're going to have a conversation. Off you go, thank you. We know they are great cooks, that's why they're here. But when it gets to this stage, and there is that semi-final place, they feel the pressure, and Alex couldn't cope with it today. Alex is a great cook. She really let herself down today because her food in the other rounds has been some wonderful creations. I believe that Alex at this stage has made far too many mistakes. A massman curry should be rich but hot. That souffle completely collapsed. In hindsight, the souffle was perhaps not the best thing to choose. She took on quite a lot, and I don't feel that Alex has done enough to push her forward. Right, well, I think we have just pushed Alex out of the competition. I need to talk about Christopher a bit. Maybe I'm a purist, but strawberry and liver uh, uh This is shock value for the reason of shock value, not to make you or I happy. Personally, I love that combination. And I'm not out to shock. I'm out for him to sit there and go, my God, that was damn nice. You don't like some of his flavour combinations. There's nothing on his plate that is cooked badly. He has shown that he can master many cooking techniques. I thought Christopher's pudding was absolutely stunningly brilliant. I think putting the cheese in there, in that crannican, was a stroke of genius. Emily, she is actually doing dishes in her mind and she can taste them and see them and feel them, get the textures and everything else that's going on. That is incredible. The salmon cooked with the lime and the ginger and the pink peppercorns, I think it's fantastic. I didn't quite get the idea of this mud pie at first, but you know, it's a style of her own they're flavours of her own which work and make you smile. I have something a bit different and I think that if I had the sort of technical experience then I think I could do something really amazing. John, she's a young girl. We know that Christopher can cope with the pressure we're going to throw at him. Imagine a final, please, and then think of young Emily. John, I am terrified to think what may happen to her if we put her under that sort of pressure. Are you willing to put her under that sort of pressure? Because, quite frankly, I'm not. I'll take on that responsibility. You watch. She is a superstar in the making. John, it's a gut feeling. I see loads of these guys come through here. He's got what it takes. I'm telling you, believe me, he's got what it takes. Who's it going to be? And our semi-finalist is Emily. Congratulations. I was so close, but just not there. I did the best I could, and I'm so happy I got to this stage. Well, stay with me. Disappointed, but happy with myself that I gave it a shot and I have absolutely no regrets whatsoever about doing this. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Well done. Thank Good you on you. Thank you so much. I never in my wildest dreams thought that I'd get this far. Never in a million years. And now that I'm here, I'm just, oh, I can't wait for it. I really can't. Emily will return for the semi-finals. 
But next time we're back with six new contestants all battling it out for the title of MasterChef. <laughs>